Shalom Chavrim, I'm Stephen Benoon. You're watching Israeli News Live, a prophetic segment of our broadcast today. This is going to be a very much a, kind of an in-depth um, uh, talk I wanted to share with you guys because of the criticism, uh, especially my wife really caught a lot of criticism for having Harold Kautz on the program the other day, which he will be airing on here on Israeli News Live a little bit here as well be running part of that broadcast here. The audio quality, quality, by the way, is not the best in the world, but I wanted to talk to you beforehand because a lot of people don't understand, especially amongst the Christian community, do not understand that sometimes we interview people that have differing views in what we have as well. But we find that some of the information that they may have, we feel like might benefit you as our viewers, and my wife especially interviews a lot of controversial people, but sometimes it's because there's one specific thing that those people have uh, that we feel is very vital and necessary for the viewers that we, that we have. But again, doesn't mean that we agree with everything that they have to say, uh, and I'm sure there's many things that we think and believe that a lot of the listeners don't agree with either. But many viewers are still right here. They listen. They want to know more because they're curious. And that's what we're trying to do is to dig deeper into things. But what really concerned me in the case of the interview that my wife did with Harold Kautso was the fact that um, she really got thrown under the bus by just a minority of people, but some of the Christians that felt like, oh my gosh, Harold is not a Christian. No, he's not. He's a scientist, and it doesn't make him a bad guy. And although he may have some views that I don't agree with, I'm sure I've got a lot of views that he doesn't agree with. But people tend to forget that as Paul instructed in 1 Corinthians, that we become all things to all men, saving that we might win some. And let me just bring some of this up because I think it would do us some good not to be so judgmental about people. And I'm going to really kind of go deep into this that I'm hoping that it might help you out. See, it says here, for, for though I be free from all men, yet have I made myself servant unto all that I might gain the more. See, see, Paul became free of all men. He no longer was bound down to the, to the Judaic traditions of the Pharisaic ways. He became free from that. And I, myself, my wife as well, we became free from uh, the religious systems of the world that we live in, saving that we might be able to serve all that believe in different types of beliefs, that we might be able to come together and to reason things out that perhaps maybe we might save some, including the Catholic people, including the atheist or whatever it might be. We are looking, we are in a job of trying to win souls for Yeshua. All right, and so this is what Paul did. And he says unto the Jews, I became as a Jew, that I might gain the Jews. To them that are under the law, as under the law, that I might gain them that are under the law. To them that are without the law, as without. Being not without a law to God, but under the law to Christ, that I might gain them that are without the law. To the weak became I as weak, that I might gain the weak. And I made all things to all men, that I might by, by all means save some. And this I do uh, for the gospel's sake, that I might be partaker thereof with you. And I think that a lot of times we forget this. And even in Christian circles, I see so many Christians that beat up on one another. You know, because this one says, there is no rapture. And the other one says, there is a rapture. And they both hate each other because they have differing opinions on it. Instead of loving one another and saying, well, you know, brother, if there's one, praise God, I, I want to be there with you. And the other one's saying, you know, well, you know, if there's not one, you know, all right, I, I appreciate that fact, you know, but if we go, I hope we go together. You know, the worst of love. You know, and this is what really gets me, because friends, let me tell you something. I believe this has got a lot to do with why God says in his word, in not just one place, but many places. You have in Revelation, you have in, in, in uh, Zechariah, you have in Obadiah, you even have it in the Apocrypha writings that God is going to send. Not in most cases, it speaks of the anointed ones that are coming, but in, in Revelation, it speaks of the two witnesses that will be coming that we find in Revelation chapter 11. And why does it say two witnesses? Why does it say in the Old Testament, the anointed ones? Why doesn't it say say two rabbis? Why doesn't it say the Baptists, the Methodists, or the Presbyterians, or the Pentecostals? You know why? Because none of them have it right. The Jews don't have it right. Neither do the Christian churches have it right. Now, it doesn't mean that they all don't have a portion of God's Word. Yes, they do. 
They each have their own thing, their own uh, part that is true. And it doesn't mean that, they're, that the Christian people are not saved and that they don't know Yeshua as their Messiah. That's not the point. But the problem, it seems, that God knows is that no one, no one religion, not Jewish, not Gentiles, not Buddhists, any of these groups have anything that is perfectly right. Not that I think that anything in Buddhism is right to begin with. You know, I just kind of slip of the tongue there. But my point is, is in the basic fundamentals of Christianity and Judaism, Islam is just a creation of the Catholic Church. Unfortunately for my Arabic friends, I'm sorry for, to tell you that, but the truth has to be made known. Now, the issue comes down as this. Notice what Revelation 11 says. But the, uh, it speaks about, there was given me a reed like unto a rod, and the angel stood saying, Rise and measure the temple of God and the altar and them that worship therein. But the court which is without the temple, leave out and measure it not. For it is given unto the Gentiles, and the holy city shall they tread underfoot forty and two months. That's three and a half years. This is why there's a big fight over Jerusalem right now. And this is why the Jews are going to lose that part of Jerusalem where the temple would stand because Rome is going to take control of that under, under the direction or with the help of the Palestinian people. They rise up with a, you know, a small people and that's Rome that is and the Palestinians are that small people. But then he says here, and I will give power unto my two witnesses. And they shall prophesy a thousand two hundred and three score days clothed in sackcloth. These are the two olive trees and the two candlesticks standing before the God of the earth. And let me tell you something. That, that, that candlestick, all right, the two candlesticks, the two olive branches, and they're on either side of the golden lampstand, by the way, because Revelation John refers you back to uh, 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 the, the book of Zechariah when he says who they are. He refers you back to that, and it speaks about those two olive branches being on either side of the golden menorah. All right, now that golden menorah happens to be Yeshua, and we know who the two lamps or the two olive trees are on either side of it because clearly Yeshua stood there, and when he stood there, what was it there that was standing there? It was actually we saw that on either side of Yeshua on Mount Transfiguration, that's Jesus, on Mount Transfiguration was Moses and Elijah, a prefigure of the two witnesses coming in this day. And they're not coming out of the Baptist church, and they're not coming out of the Methodist church, or the Catholic church, or the Pentecostal church, or any of the non-denominational groups. They are not coming out of one thing or the other. And isn't it a shame? It's a shame. And this is my, I'm just sharing with you my heart here on this here. I think it's a shame that the, that the Father, God of heaven, had to raise up two witnesses, bring back two of his anointed ones from thousands of years ago, had to bring them back in this day to be a witness, not only to the Jews, my friend, but to Gentiles as well. Because believe me, do you think, if you are a bride that is to be without spot and without wrinkle, do you think that you would be, if there, if, if, let's say, and I'll take it and just as a neutral stance, all right, there's the group that believes that we're all going in a rapture, that those that are saved and believed, and you're supposed to be without spot and without wrinkle. Do you really think that you're all going to go in a rapture? If the Baptists go, then the Catholics are out. If the Catholics go, then the Baptists are out. And the Pentecostals go, then the rest of those are out. You understand what I'm saying? You've got to be without spot and without wrinkle to go stand in the presence of the Almighty. No wonder why the Bible speaks about also in another place in the Bible that it says that, uh, that, 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 that the Father speaks in there about um, that the ten, ten men of the nations, of the Gentiles, will take hold of him, the skirt of him that is a Jew, and say, show us your way. We hear that God is with you. And everybody's all caught up. Not everybody, but you have a large group of messianic believers. And, I'm, and again, I'm not throwing any of our different brothers and sisters under the bus by saying this. I'm just trying to show you a point here. The messianic believers are trying to take all the traditions that the Jews have. And they're trying to take all of the skirt of him as a Jew and say, show us your way. We hear God is with you. Are you serious? That prophecy will fulfill itself when Israel recognizes who her Messiah is. And the skirt of the Jew they will take a hold of is going to be one of those witnesses or anointed ones that has opened the eyes of the Jews and the Gentiles will take hold of that skirt and say, show us your way, we hear God is with you. 
And until God is with them, they will not be able to ask that question. All right, so the point is that I'm trying to make here. Look at Obadiah. Obadiah speaks about it. And the captivity of this host of the children of Israel and that are among the Canaanites, even into Zarephath, and to the captivity of Jerusalem that is in Sephard, shall possess the cities of the south. And saviors, or deliverers, it could be translated, shall come up on Mount Zion to judge the Mount of Esau, and the kingdom shall be the Lord's. There's another. All right, it's just like... Zechariah's prophecy. And I answered the second time and said unto him, What are these two olive branches? What are beside the two golden spouts that empty the golden oil out of themselves? And he answered me and said, Now knowest thou not what these are? I said, No, my Lord. And he said, These are the two anointed ones that stand by the Lord of the whole earth. So you see, the point that I'm trying to make here is that it is, a, it is actually a shame upon Christianity, that we got so far away from God. And this is not against any one particular individual. You, know, you understand what I'm saying? This is not against individuals. This is as a whole. I was caught up in the systems as well. I, I was a Baptist when, when I was a teenager. My family was not religious. You know, I gave my life to Yeshua in, a, in London Baptist Church in Castleberry, Alabama. I went to the Pentecostal realms and, and different groups like this. You know, I, w I never really settled in one place. I was always moving about because I never felt like it's, I knew something was missing. And yet knowing I'm a Jew as well. And yet I knew something was missing. But I've had respect and love for each of the brothers and sisters that were in the different groups. As a member of the Chabad organization of Jews, you know, and I've been all these different groups here, but the thing is, is I realize that not, not one of them, not one single group ever held it together to where God could say, I'm going to send two Baptists, two Methodists, two Presbyterians, or Pentecostals, or whatever more. He can't. Because see, you know the Father knows. He loves us as well. He, he's willing to work with us in the condition we're in. But He knows that none of us have it right. Not 100%. He has to raise up Moses and Elijah and send them back. The pure word of God. Remember that scripture I read to you from the Apocrypha of Moses? Or, yeah, yeah, the Apocrypha of Moses where he says to Joshua, Take this word that I give you and hide it in an earthen vessel that was made from the foundation of the earth. And I told you, the Lord revealed to me, Joshua was the vessel. He's the only thing, the human body is what was made from the foundation of the earth. It was Adam's body that was made. We are, that, we are those vessels. Today, you are that vessel. You are the temple of the living God in which God desires to dwell inside of. And the thing is, is what we're trying to bring to you, like my wife was sharing with you the other day, with this, this incredible information from Harold Coutts. Black goo. Sounds like the old movie, uh, The Blob, that came out, I don't know, what, in the 70s or something. I remember watching it as a kid, you know? <clears throat> and this black goo, everybody says, it's demonic. Harold says it's demonic as well. But the thing is, is it's also what science is calling programmable matter. CNN ran a thing recently called programmable, programmable matter on one of their news broadcasts. Do you know it's black goo is what it's from? Do you realize, for example, chemtrails? That's another thing that Harold has worked on very in depth, including Morgellons and autism and things like that. And some of these things are actually, he believes, and he doesn't say it emphatically, and he doesn't even allege it. He's cautious in what he says, but it is caused by airborne particles that get into our bodies that can be programmable as well. Black goo is definitely a programmable matter. And the thing is, Satan is so longing to live in the human body. He wants to live, you know, it's just like people say, for example, when you become a believer, how many people, we read in the Bible, they were, you know, Mary Magdalene had demons in her. You know, Jesus cast them out. The, the, the maniac of Gadaria filled with devils, and they wanted to go in the hogs. They went out. 
Let me, let me just read something to you. I want to share, so I'm going to share a video with you here in just a moment. I want to read something to you before I play this one clip from Harold Kautz on a different interview, but I'm going to, I want to read something to you. And this may blow your mind away a little bit here. This is from Isaiah 14. This is where Satan wants to be like God, sitting in the temple of God, right? Okay. This, but, but I want you to see what happens though. Watch, watch what the scripture says. All they do answer and say unto thee, Art thou also become weak as we? Art thou become likened to us? Thy pomp is brought down to the nether world. Talking about Satan now. And the noise of thy psalteries, the maggot is spread under thee and the worms cover thee. How art thou fallen from heaven, O day star, son of the morning? How art thou cut down to the ground that discast lots over the nations? And thou saidest in thy heart, I will ascend into heaven and, and uh, above the stars of God and I will exalt my throne and I will sit upon the mount of the meeting upon, uh, in the upper uttermost parts of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the most high. Yet thou shalt be brought down to the nether world to the uttermost parts of the pit. Now this is written about Satan, right? Let me just share with you something right here. Look on your screen right here. All right? The maggot is spread under thee and the worms cover thee. Yeah, so let me, let me share something with you. Right there in Hebrew. That, well, maybe I can even bring it up for you. I can use the translation part here. I don't know how well you can see this on your screen. Let me just see if I can pop it up. All right, here we go. Ramash. Ramash is that first word I was going to show to you in Hebrew there that you see. Ramash, in the sense of breeding... A maggot as rapidly bred, literally or figuratively. All right. Now, when we get to the when we get to the next word here that is used here, talat. This is the fact that the worm has become his skin, or snake, you might say, or it can be the worms that are living in the human being today. You know, the fungi that takes on forms like, like. Um, inside the bodies. They, they find uh, all types of uh, parasites and things that are living in the human body that actually have faces and things that look like, like li and they are living organisms that reproduce and breed on their own. You might say, Steve, what does that got to do with uh, black goo? Black goo is also considered a, a living substance but it's demonic and programmable, and I have a very strange feeling, especially from what I've understood from some scientists, that this is a plan that they have to try to get us, get in our being so that they can control us. You want to talk about a mark of the beast? Jeez. Now, I'm going to play a little clip for you on Dave Hodges. Dave Hodges is a Christian man. He's got a program there. And Dave Hodges has a guest on, and he's actually going to speak of Harold Kautz and Black Goo. Listen to this. Take about one minute to listen to this. Listen to what he has to say here. Let me make sure we have the um, uh, volume up here to where you can hear it. Okay. Basis 56 or something like that, one of the, the internet video providers that you know talk about alternative news. And he was talking about how this black substance that they were bringing out of this horizon well wasn't what we thought it was. It was like a black product that was infused with iridium and monatomic gold. And that he said was like a basic form, a life form. Now, whether he's right or wrong, I have absolutely no idea. But he's a physicist. He wasn't selling anything. He was just saying what he was doing. They had samples of it. They talked about how it reacted in the laboratory. And I thought to myself, this is a little bit too far out there. I'm not going to really go into this when I do Hagman or Hodges because it's really a little bit strange because this is just too far into the rabbit hole. Well, now I'm starting to find out that the black goo is used as an interface between the AI that they're connecting us all into and the fourth dimensional protocols that they're tying it into as far as Lucifer with their D-wave quantum computers. And the black goo is actually something they have in huge amounts 
to make these quantum computers, these interdimensional computers work. Now when I started reading that, I'm like, wait a minute now, this is just getting a little bit too weird. I'm gonna let people talk, hear about this stuff on the show tonight. You guys can make up your own mind on this stuff. It's so far out there that I don't even wanna be on record as having said that I know for certain this is real because I don't. But I want you guys, if you, you can look up uh, Harold Bella, B-E-L-L-A, you can look up Black Goo, and you can pretty much figure out what you think this stuff is. Now, now, Herod Villa is Harold Kautz. Uh, it's actually Harold Kautz Villa is his full name. And uh, Harold, he is not against the Christian people whatsoever. Uh, he does have his own views. He's got some views, no doubt, that are way out there. I'm not saying that they're not. But again, my point is, when he sat here in our office, because he only lives three hours away from us here, uh, we met Harold uh, a few months back. Yana interviewed him on uh, Kim Trails, and powerful, powerful video she did on that. Uh, and these are things that many Christians are researching because it deals with your health. And he speaks about the chemtrails being that people are 100% infected by the chemtrails, right? Uh, but he goes into the things that in, end up living in our bodies from these chemtrails, which reminds me of the scripture there in Isaiah chapter 14, speaking about Satan. When he takes on, he, he becomes a worm-like creature. You know, and, 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 and the thing is, is we're a temple of God. We want our vessels clean without a doubt. But my issue is, when Harold sat here in our office as well, I listened to him, and I did like Paul did. I became all things that I might save some. And when he began to say things, I knew where these things, by God's grace, lined up with the Word of God, and I began to share with him things that were found in the Bible as well. And that began to even cause Harold to stop and say, wait a minute, wow, I never knew that before. Can you share that with me? Where is that at? And as he stated with me. He said, I do believe that Jesus is the Messiah. Okay, so this is what I'm saying, friends. You cannot throw people under the bus just because they might have some wild ideas. Give them a chance. Be a witness to people. And don't just think that everybody is some demonic being as a result that because they don't share the view that you have. All right? And at least, if nothing else, in this case, and this is Harold right here. Uh, this is a different interview that he's in, and I'm going to play a clip for you here as well and then after this broadcast here later tonight I will also be loading for you the interview between Yana and Harold as well so that you can see for yourself the things that he has to say and again when you when we do play that video tonight keep in mind we do not say that we agree with everything that's being said but the point is is fish for the thing that matters and I think this black goo and what Satan is trying to use it for is very demonic. And yet they're putting it in all kinds of music videos is a great, a great thing. They're, they're coming out with CNN saying this, uh, this programmable matter. Yes, programmable, all right. And believe me, and it does have a life force of its own, which is very demonic. All right, listen to a little bit here what Harold has to say on this particular video as well, please. And this black goo has to do something with the communication with demons. This is in the, in the black magic tradition, these black goo fists were used to communicate with demons. So this all interconnects on political, scientific, and the level of mythology. Um, we can access black goo also from the little pictures from the microscope. This is German rain. And if you want to know what this liquid does, uh, you can have a look at it. In the You'll get to see some of what he does inside the lab itself where they're working with it. It's a liquid crystal. This liquid is self-organizing physically. And this, at the moment, is sleeping. It's not aware of being observed, it's quiet. Sometimes when it doesn't like to be observed, it might jump out in the pot, straight into your face. If you have two of those in one room, get them five meters close to each other, they stare at each other, then they decide that they want to be united. And then they start to pull. It's like magnetism, but it's intelligent. 
And when they realize that you hold them within the vessel and they cannot ex escape, they get angry and start to shake, to shake the vessel and try to break through the wall. Because they know once they are through, they can flow over the ground and, and unite to a big unit. This now, let me just share with you here, guys, what I'm trying to get you to understand as well. Harold tells you this is a very demonic substance. And he does talk about it having a life. And the thing is, this should not, even for the Christian, it should not be something that is far out. Yeshua said, if the, if the people held their peace, the rocks would immediately cry out. It is scientifically proven that the rocks on the earth, it has its own life. That's not a bad life, though, because God created this earth. The trees have a life. Trees can, can they, they live and their sap is like their blood in their veins, so to speak, you know. And the rocks themselves, they grow. They actually grow in things. And isn't it interesting how that when God would take to the prophets of old and he would say, prophesy to the mountains and to the rocks. Why did God ever do that? I have no idea. I don't know. I don't know all the answers. And I can't say that everything that Harold is saying is correct, but what he is showing you here is from a scientific study and research that he and 19 other or 20 other scientists have been working on to try to understand this. And I know a lot of the things that he is bringing out, the government is really coming against him. They are looking for ways to try to keep him quiet because they don't want you to know about it. Why? Because it is programmable matter for them. And it may be something that they want to put in your body, which is something that Harold speaks about as well. Because if they can get the goo in your body as a nanoparticle, then they can begin to control you. Then they can program you. This is why we're trying to get this information out to the public so that people are aware of the evils that Satan is up to in this day. I'm Stephen Benoon. You're watching Israeli News Live. Shalom.